Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. I'm doing another change log video. It's past Christmas. I want to have a relaxing day, but going for the change log is my idea of relaxing. Let's have a look. There's actually two versions that were dropped. We had the 10.2 and right after came 10.3 to fix a critical bug with Git. First of all, we have new features, the clone handles for quickly cloning shapes. There is like a nice video that explains it, but let's just have an immediate look inside my whiteboard. So I'm going to whiteboards and I have like an example here. If you have a shape, you can now click the plus and then build blocks out from this. This makes it really easy to build quick workflows and maybe even mind maps though, it's still not as fast as I would like it for a mind map. So I'll probably use a dedicated app or a whiteboard for that. Then we get to the fixed issues. The first one is the full page contents search. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, one of the first things I always try when people say that there's a full page search is my salt and pepper uh, check. And as you can see, I'm not getting back my steak page. I have a specific page which has these two keywords in that order that I used to check it. So my pet peeve isn't fixed yet, but you know, it's probably an improvement. If you have a good example for this, then do let me know. Then the next issue was a missing current page search. So what it does is with Ctrl Shift K, if you press that one, you can search within the current page. It's not perfect because it only search inside the current page. And if you're in like a sub bullet, like I'm here, it won't find anything. So if I do like yeah, current, no results, but if I go up to the page, which is in this case, December 25, and I do the same thing, then this thing returns and I can click on it to get there. I'm glad Ctrl Shift K is there and I'll definitely be using it for my longer pages. I'm currently also making a video, for example, on this, what I'm working on for Knock Free, the keyboard video I'm releasing today. Uh, and then when you have like a large page, it's nice and easy to quickly go through the page. So if I go here and I say like, hey, I wanna go to the pro section or I wanna go to the con section where I know the name. This part I absolutely love. I do hope that they'll get it working for inside of bullets as well. Then the next one had me confused. Uh, that's the don't treat blocks with heading as pre-blocks. I tried going through the ticket. So looking it up inside GitHub. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a good example to see what it fixed. I think it has something to do with auto headers and I don't know, uh, I just couldn't get it to work on my end. So a good example on this or an explain on like how these auto headers work because I couldn't enable them would help in the comments. So do let me know. Then the next one is the save inline images in Excedi Draw. Now I don't use Excedi Draw a lot, but not being able to save the images that are inside there, that's that's a big one because when you're making drawings, images really help on getting that total picture going. Now, if I go checking out on the GitHub page and then towards the issue, then it's very well documented here. As you can see, like you load an image into it and then it disappears. And that of course is absolutely not what you want. So glad that that one's fixed. I'll definitely be trying uh, Excel to draw again and adding images to it because there are some mood boards that I always wanted to get into LogSeq and now I can do so. Next one is the incorrect auto save state when pasting batch blocks. This is mostly affecting plugins. If you have a plugin that inserts a list of blocks, for example, a task list app, then this would affect you because the first block wouldn't insert properly, meaning that you would always miss an item. I'm glad this is fixed. It means that a lot of the plugins where you had like unexpected results should be working a lot better. Another big one for me is the incorrect handling of pasting HTML links. And what this means is that if you had like a single list and I very often, for example, get emails with a quick action list on it, then copying and pasting those from like Outlook towards LogSeq would always mean that I have to finick around to get it working. Uh, I tested this out by generating a list using an AI tool saying like, hey, just give me a bulleted list of one line with uh, re recipes on it. And I could just paste this straight into LogSeq without any editing. This will save me a lot of time. So if you used to copying lists and having to finick around with it, I highly recommend trying that again. Then the next one is that the detached PDF viewer does not open HTTP links on the default browser. So what it meant is that if you opened a PDF view like this and you would click on a link in here, that will work fine. It would open it in a browser. But if you would use the external view, so you would have it as a separate one and you would click on something like this, instead of opening it in the browser, so I'll click on it, as you can see it now nicely opens in the browser, but it would open inside your Loxy window. And that's of course not what you want when you're clicking links as links are usually dedicated pages with special formatting that 
shouldn't reside inside your log sheet. So that's another one where I'm glad it's fixed, uh, meaning that PDF got more usage out of it. Few small fixes in the form of the sync nav bar and action bar color and the incorrect node edge color. This is mostly about the accent color that was added a couple of versions back where we see like small places where it isn't providing the color that we were expecting. Glad that they got that one fixed uh, and not so big for me, but definitely big for people that post a lot in Japanese. Uh, the EME composition detection. So what that means if you type like uh, words on your keyboard that turn into a Japanese character, it would immediately start searching, meaning that it's very hard to add multiple words. I don't have a Japanese version, so I can't demo that, but I'm sure it will help a lot for those people that very often use a conversion from regular keyboard towards Japanese characters to search and find stuff in LogSeq. Then a quick overview on the enhancements. First of all, language fixes, which are always great, but I don't have to go through them individually, mostly because I don't speak all these languages. I'm glad people that speak it natively help out on fixing it. And then let's dive straight into the plugin APIs. The plugin API in this case uh, fixes the key bindings. Now, why is that an issue? Uh, the thing that you had is that if you had like a command and you didn't want to assign a key binding to it, then that, that wouldn't work if the Logsheet wouldn't allow you to do that. And that's a problem because sometimes you have more commands than you want to put key bindings on. Key bindings are, there's a lot of them and a lot of different plugins, so they usually conflict. And you want to avoid that conflict by just leaving it blank. So me as the end user, can just pick a key whenever I feel like it, or say like, oh, I'm gonna use this feature a lot. For example, I have, of course, the Control T for interstitial journaling that I use all the time. Uh, and yes, I want that key and I don't want it to overlap with like other plugins. So I hope to see a lot of the plugins have like more things that I can assign a key binding to that are just not set. So I can tweak the key bindings to what I need as a user and not just have my keyboard filled with key bindings from every plugin that I'm using. Then a big one for people that aren't allowed to install anything on the system they are working with. For example, school computers, company computers, that, that one's like a bag on its own, but it's a zip package, meaning that you have like a portable version of LogSeq. So this means that you can take like a USB stick, put the zip file in it and unpack it, put your notes on there and then just plug in the USB stick at like your school computer and run LogSeq and take and read notes from there without having to actually install LogSeq usage. I'm definitely sure this will help a lot of people that have like a non-dedicated system that they have to work on or for example live in an internet cafe and you know there's also usually a restriction on allowing you to install things but you usually can run your own portable apps. Great for people that uh, that need this. And the last one here with more localization support is mostly for translation and making sure the things are properly formatted in English. Now, before I get to the fangs, let's go to the dot three to talk about the fixes that were made in the extra release. So the first one is the fix missing bundles in Git. And one of the reasons for that one, I was diving into it. Let me show you the Git page and it talks about Asar. Now, I didn't know what that was or what it was used for, but after diving into it, it seems to be a library that allows you to tar a lot of files, but still be able to access the files. And in practice, that was blocking Git from working, which is, you know, annoying to say the least if you're using Git like me to version your notes. Um, mostly it didn't mean that everything broke and was gone, but it meant that Git would say something like, hey, I can't find the .git directory, I can't work. Uh, meaning that any changes you had to do either do manually uh, until this fix was there. So now we should be back to normal working of LogSeq when using Git to do versioning on your files. And then a couple of small fixes in the form of the safety key string, meaning that now you can have commands that start with numbers. This wasn't possible before because it would fail. Uh, another one is the percent encoding file names with leading dots. And that one means that it can now read files that start with a dot. For people that are not familiar on Unix systems like Mac and Linux, when a file starts with a dot, it means that the file is hidden and LogSeq doesn't know the difference then between a hidden file and a title that just starts with a dot. An example I can think of is like .net, which if you wanna write it down, you write it like an actual dot and not like the full words, which is how I would work around the issue before, but now it's no longer needed. And then in the enhancement, some French. My French is absolutely terrible, but I'm sure it's perfect for the people that are French speaking. That was a quick through the uh, change log. For people that have been on my channel for a long time, you might recognize my home office that is still very much alive. Uh, I set up some things here so that I could make 
quick videos like this without having to drive to my studio and I can just do a quick recording. Let's get to the thanks. So a couple of the thanks that I have here is, I see here Vivian for the French translation and Hidikazu Kubuta to add the percent encoding file names. Then if I go back towards previous change log, Eliover for the updated French translation, Jiyi for the updated Chinese translation, Weep for the update in the Turkish translation, and Richard Gars Gar, oh, these are, I'm not familiar with these characters. So sorry, Richard, but Richard Garsar for the Slovak translation uh, and Vivian for more localization support for linked references. That was like for the better English one that I mentioned before. That's it for this change log. A few quick updates. First of all, happy holidays, happy new year, whatever you're celebrating. I hope you have the best of time and meet with friends and family, have food, all those kind of things. Next to that, I'm working on a couple of videos. Today, I'm releasing a video on the Knock Free, which is the keyboard I'm using right now, uh, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I know keyboard is a bit outside of the scope, but I normally talk about with Boxseek, but I love keyboards. And when doing note taking, you need like a lot of typing. So those things are slightly related, but I mostly have like a, a need for messing around with keyboards. Other things is that next to the video on the knock free, I'm also working on a video where I talk about how I did the research inside LogSeek. So there will be like a detailed view on that video on like, what did I do to collect the information, how I collect the information, how I turn that into a script for the video. That will be right after this. And after that, I have more plans and different ideas. I just don't have enough time. Time is like the main thing. I still have to do like regular work from uh, Monday to Thursday and I got one day a week to work on these videos. So plenty of things. Remember, you're awesome. See you in the next one and keep it up.